This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we're going to look at one of the new affordable Windows 8.1 Atom Bay Trail convertible tablet, laptop, whatever you want to call it. New netbook, maybe. 10.1 inch display. This is the Asus Transformer Book T100. Since it's a Transformer Book, you open it up and you don't just see a laptop like so. Press the little latch right here and you can detach it, and then you've just got a 10 inch tablet. We're going to look at it now. So this is the ASUS Transformer Book T100. Think of it as the new era of netbooks upon us. This is only $399 for the 64 gig model. And for that, you get an Intel Atom quad core CPU. This is a new Bay Trail, what we've all been waiting for. Atom that doesn't, mm, well, there's a word that starts with S and ends with K. Well, it doesn't, you know. It's not bad CPU, finally. Good thing to see. This is not up to Intel Core i5 Haswell specs, but it's a much more usable machine. And for $399, that's impressive. This is full Windows 8.1 right here. The 32-bit, because we're looking at 32-bit CPU here, still not 64-bit. I don't think most people are going to care about that, though. Full Windows, not just RT. You have access to the desktop, but not just the desktop. Like, there it is. Well, you get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and the desktop, and nothing else. You can install your Windows programs on here. We put Diablo 3 on here. We have Photoshop on here. We're going to show you that so you can see how that plays out. So a versatile machine, more versatile than Windows RT for those of you who need the legacy applications. Obviously, full keyboard right here. Small though, this is a 10.1 inch machine and it's separable, just like that. So you have a 10 inch tablet. This is an IPS display, which is nice. No cheese ball display for your $399. Uh, viewing angles are pretty good. Reflections are quite high. You can really see the elevation of the, the glass above the display substrate. Another thing that hurts is this is only 210 nits of brightness. That's pretty dim. Color accuracy, just average on this. Not terrible, but not super bold colors. But again, in this price range, how much can you ask for? That's okay. We'd like it a little bit brighter, honestly, because as a tablet, you tend to take it everywhere and maybe want to use it outdoors. It gets to be hard. Anyway, still, compact, light, 1.2 pounds, not bad. Here we have our volume controls right there. And on the side over here, we have something that switches between desktop and Metro, just like the home button would on the front. Standard capacitive home button. Interesting addition there. Not too thick. Power button's up here. We have our micro SD card slot right there, compatible with SDXC cards. Micro USB and micro HDMI. The USB is for charging. It comes with a compact little charger, just like you would see on other mobile OS style tablets. This is our combo 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone jack. And robust locator pins right here to help the dock get in place. And this is the connection port for the keyboard dock. Very compact little charger. Again, like something you'd expect to see with an Android tablet. Only a short cord here, about three feet in length. That can be kind of annoying for something you want to use as a computer and plug in. Happily, it has very good battery life, about eight and a half hours with average use and the brightness set to 50%, so you won't be charging it that much. One thing, though, when you will charge it, let me tell you, it takes a long time to charge for some reason. Really, you just something you want to do overnight. It's that slow if the battery is pretty much drained. It's a detachable stand standard micro USB to USB cable, so if you happen to lose this, the one that came with your smartphone should do the trick as well. And this is a pretty commonplace 2 amp charger. Again, like you see on a lot of Android tablets, even the iPad chargers 2 amps as well. And the usual 5 volt out because it's USB based charging, which is part of the reason it's slow. USB based charging is not the fastest thing. Aesthetically speaking, here comes the bad news. Very shiny, glossy, cheap, plasticky looking back. Again, for the price, you're just not going to get really nice spun metal like you would on some of the high-end ASUS Android tablets that we looked at in years past that have the spun metal finish. You get super glossy plastic, gets disgusting looking really, really fast. Be prepared to clean it up or just live with that. And oddly, this is something that we see with some of these more affordable products. You get kind of surface texture mismatches. For example, you, this is super duper glossy, right? But the included keyboard dock, and this, this is included for your $399. What a deal, right? This is a kind of matte, looks more convincing like metal even though it's not finish and it's matte over here. So the, the dock does not particularly match the tablet in other words. There, as you can see it has rubber feet here for grip. The usual ASUS style very sturdy kind of docking port right here. Release latch to hold it in place and release it easily enough. We have an integrated trackpad right here. This trackpad is kind of hit or miss. Sometimes you're moving along and it just stops following your finger. Seems to be a common problem. Other people have commented on it as well. So. Thankfully, you can resort to the touchscreen if you need to. 
full keyboard here and I know that ASUS worked really hard on doing a nice layout here and they really did. The thing is this is still 10.1 inches. Remember those first teeny netbooks that came out? That's what size this is. So even though we have nice key travel right here good key relief and stuff. It's quite tiny. It's quite cramped. I think you fellows with bigger hands are going to feel mm, like it's a little hard to type on that because of that. But other than that it's not bad. There's a little flex to the dock right here as you can see. I'm not really grabbing it even that hard. And this is where our USB 3.0 port is. The USB port is not on the tablet. It is on the dock. That is it for ports on our docking section. This does not have a battery in it. The battery is inside the tablet only, so you don't have a supplementary kind of setup. But again, this is meant to be something more affordable. Usually you see that in more expensive products like the HP NVX2 and the ASUS TX300, which is a full Intel Core i5 machine. One thing I can tell you is that our keyboard dock has been very flaky. I know I saw one other review where they got a warped dock too. This is a retail purchase, so this wasn't vetted by ASUS first. This came from a local store. and. Uh, a lot of the time the keyboard actually doesn't work. The trackpad always works, the USB port always works, the keys e either they get ignored or it types in hundreds of spaces. So hopefully that's a challenge when, when a company is making something this affordable that, that you know the components are not the most expensive and the quality control can lapse. So I hope that this is not a problem that we see on all the T100s the ship. The display, as I said, five points of multi-touch, Windows 8.1, so you get cute maneuvers like that. If we go to the desktop you can see the return of the start menu. Still not your full start menu. It functions to switch you back between the Metro UI or Live Tile UI and this one. And if you press and hold you get all sorts of power user features that you can see right there. This has the Bay Trail Quad Core Z3740 CPU that is clocked at 1.33 gigahertz. It can turbo boost to 1.86 gigahertz. So a lot more processing power here. Still 2 gigs of RAM, but now it's DDR3 rather than DDR2 that we saw on the old Clover Trail machine, so that's definite improvement. Storage is still unfortunately eMMC based, even though the storage controller has gotten faster on this, the storage itself has not. So that's pretty much the same storage that we see used on a variety of Android tablets and on the older Intel based Windows 8 tablets as well. It's not the fastest storage, so generally speaking, program installation is going to take longer and things are going to take a little bit longer to launch because that is not as fast as SSD running on a SATA interface. Not the end of the world, still durable, still you can move this thing around, it's not, it's no moving parts in the, like a hard drive would be, so that is what it is. Get a 1.2 megapixel camera up front, it's okay, there's no camera on the rear on this guy, again for budget we don't expect much. You have dual band Wi-Fi on this, single antenna and you have Bluetooth 4.0, you're not going to get MIMO on something in this price range. The tablet does have built-in stereo speakers on the back and they are ungodly loud. It's just shocking. I, I think ASUS took all the snarky comments about how quiet their Android tablets were. And these, there's a speaker grill right here. There's one on the other side. Frighteningly loud without being too, too harsh, actually. It, it's, it's impressive. Built-in microphone as well for those of you who want to do video chat and you don't want to put a headset on. So how much faster is this guy compared to... Last generation dual core Atom processors, well, it's twice as fast. It really makes a difference where the old Clover Trail tablets, even the ones we like, like the HP NVX2, they could seem certainly sluggish and multitasking. Could be a bit of a chore for them, much better for single tasks. This guy's twice as fast as moving up there. PC Mark 7, the score is 2323. That's not bad. Again, it's twice as fast as the old Clover Trails, but it's less than half the speed of a Core i5 still. For 3D Mark, the iStorm Extreme Test, it scored a reasonable 9,076 with Intel HD graphics. Not nearly as fast as the graphics integrated graphics that you'll see on Intel Core i5, and i7, even i3, but it's an improvement. And we'll test out some games so you can see. It's really not up to desktop 3D gaming, but certainly the Windows Store games are fine, casual games are fine, and some older gaming titles can be okay too. So in case you're wondering how desktop games play, we tried Diablo 3 because it, well, it scales well to lesser computers, shall we say. And, well, this wouldn't be playable at all on an older Clover Trail system. Here, we're still, if you take a look at our frames per second down in the corner here, not doing really well. And we've set all effects to low and dropped the resolution down to 1280 by 720. And we're not even fighting any bad guys right now. And just to show you the settings, we'll go into our game menu here.
and you can see we're running at 1280 by 720. I've turned off anti-aliasing. I've set all effects to low. The next move would be actually to turn some things off if it's possible at all. For example, cluster density. And you can see there's even a little lag here just going into the options screen. And for all, we can turn shadows off and everything else low is the lowest you can go. Then we could drop it down to 800 by 600, but boy, that's just not really very fun. And even with doing that, we're 17, 18 frames per second. And if we go ahead and fight some bad guys, it's going to drop even more. Here we have a whole lot of bad guys. And our frame rate's at about 15 or so. So that's Diablo 3 on the ASUS Transformer Book T100. So how about using desktop programs? This is Adobe Photoshop CS 5.5 that we're running right here. And we've got an image open that was taken with the Nokia Lumia 1020. This is the 39 megapixel image that it shoots, not the smaller 5 megapixel image. And this is a 10.1 meg image file. And we have Adobe Bridge running in the background. Now running both Photoshop and Bridge can slow things down a bit. But once you have your application in the foreground, it'll be fine. So what happens if we want to do something like an image rotation? Speed's not too bad, and say we want to do auto contrast. Thought about it for a minute, then it did. Now, how about if we put some interesting filter on here? Say so we just want to sharpen it, which is pretty realistic. We might want to do an unsharp mask on it. And we'll go to the default settings. Thinking about thinking about it, that would be instantaneous on another machine, but still that's very, 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 very bearable, especially for something that's this portable and inexpensive. And here you can see we also have Adobe Bridge running at the same time in the background. So with two gigs of RAM, you don't want to run too many programs at once. Speaking of desktop programs, another neat thing is you get a license for Office Home and Student Edition. So you can get your Word, your PowerPoint, and your Excel included. You don't have to spend the money for the Office suite, which is nice, very nice. Right now we're using the desktop version of IE. Of course you have it both in Metro and the desktop. And we're going to test out video playback with our Microsoft Surface 2 review. An obvious competitor running Windows RT with higher class hardware. A little bit higher price tag, but it, again that one is RT so you don't have the whole desktop experience. Speakers are at 50%, pretty loud. We'll go to full this is Lisa 720. From Tech Review and second time's a charm. This is the so Microsoft this is a 720p. This is a Windows 8.1 RT tablet direct from Microsoft with some improvements inside and a new look to the casing. And pretty much the same style, but new finish. We're going to look at it now. So it can certainly handle that. It can handle 1080p playback as well, which is useful since you have the micro HDMI out. You might want to output to a higher resolution monitor or to your TV, but obviously 720p is what makes sense right here. So all in all, pretty exciting for $399. If you're looking for something ultra portable that can be detachable and used as a tablet at the same time, I, the keyboard, given how small it is, I'd say for people who do some light typing, but not those of you who are serious typists. I'd be even more excited by the product if it wasn't for the quality control issues our particular unit had. You can see right now it's been typing in maniacal equal signs by itself, but the rest of the keyboard is actually sometimes coming, sometimes going. Once in a while the keys work, once in a while they don't work. And our micro SD card slot also has been pretty flaky. It takes about 10 insertions actually to get it working. Maybe this is a one-off problem, some growing pains, you know, ASUS and their quality control. We have to wonder about that, but hopefully it'll be a good product. Certainly it's very affordable and quite powerful for what you get. So that's the ASUS Transformer Book T100 just hitting the market now again, 349 for the 32 gig. I'm not sure how many places are going to carry that because honestly, that's just not enough storage for full Windows. 64 gig, 399 Certainly a bargain price and a wonderful evolution of the netbook with the versatility of a tablet. We just hope that the quality control issues that we have with our model aren't going to be something that you see on a lot of models that actually ship. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review with benchmarks, photos, and a lot of other good things, and hit that like button.